authority. I was glad to learn from your letter that you are studying about Indonesia in school. I am enclosing some Indonesian stamps which you can show to your class. Someday I hope you can visit our islands to see how we live as I did when I visited you in the United States. What can I tell you about Indonesia? It's raining outside right now. I could tell you about our long rainy season and our tropical climate, but I'm sure you will learn about this at school. I suppose I could describe our animal life and our tropical vegetation. I could tell you about our economy and our plantations. The great groves of palm trees which produce palm oil, the rubber plantations, but I'm sure you can read about these in your textbooks. I think I would like to tell you about our people and how we live. There are many things that are alike in both our countries and many things that are different. There is traffic in our cities too, but for each car there are dozens of bicycles. Even some of our taxis are three-wheeled bicycles with the passengers in front and the drivers behind. We have jeeps and trucks and automobiles, but they all come from the United States and Europe because we don't have factories here to make them. It's not strange that we have our traffic problems down here on the equator. After all, Three million people live in Jakarta, our capital city. Many of our newer buildings are like yours too. Buildings such as the National Museum, which is much like your National Art Gallery in Washington. Buildings like the National Post Office and our President's home, the White House of Indonesia. Throughout our cities, new plans are being developed. Construction would be a familiar sight to you. But our methods are different because we do not yet have much machinery. You would feel at home in many of our houses. Many of our people even dress like you do most of the time. At other times, they dress in the traditional way, like little Yusuf Sujito in his black cap and sarong. You would like my friends, the Sujitos. Sometimes, when Mr. Sujito isn't busy at his job with the government, he goes to market with the family. Bananas, the peddler says. Bananas and oranges. and a free sample for Yusuf. I hope the peddler is a friend of his. For a quick bite, the Sujitos can buy packets of delicious steamed rice wrapped in palm leaves instead of wax paper. And just as you might buy a hot dog to go with the rice, in Indonesia we have satay, strips of meat barbecued on sticks over a charcoal fire. With our food, we like hot peppers and spices. The hotter, the better. Then to cool off, we have soda pop and soft drinks. Ice cold orange tastes mighty good here on the equator. So you see, city life here isn't so very different from life in your hometown. It's when I leave the city that I realize how things in our country would seem different to you. Our country is spread over an area as large as yours, but it's broken up into 3,000 pieces. Java, Sumatra, Borneo, the Celebes, the Moluccas, New Guinea, 3,000 islands. You can imagine how much harder it is for us to communicate with each other than it is for you who have only mountains and plains to cross. That's one reason why radio is so important to us. We have a national radio 
that broadcasts news of current events in the new national language and many other languages to our 80 million people. We are also making moving pictures to bring information to as many people as possible. Motion pictures and radio are so important because most of our people learn best by looking and by listening. They don't read newspapers or books because most of them have never been to school. What this man knows about rice farming, he learned from his parents. And he can tell his own little boy only what he knows. Things are done the same way generation after generation. This is one of the things we are changing. Before planting a new crop, some farmers make an offering to the rice god. Do you feel that offering this rice is a strange custom? Perhaps the farmer would feel that your custom of throwing rice at the wedding is even stranger. Another thing that we are changing is the harvesting of rice in the ancient tradition. Each head is cut one by one with a small knife in the palm of the hand. In some places, the rice is hulled and pounded into flour with poles. In other regions, the grain is hulled in the fields by stamping on it. It's hard for you to realize, but it takes at least 200 times more labor to produce a bushel of rice here than in your country where you have machinery to help. People work hard in Indonesia. Eight men have to work longer and harder to unload a boat full of coconuts than if there were one man and a machine. Our fishing boats sail far out to sea. They carry no charts, no navigation aids, no books. They use only the skills of their crew. Why do our people do things in old-fashioned ways? They haven't had a chance. Our children weren't able to go to school. For many, many years, Indonesia was a colony, unable to help herself or her people. A little of our history is told in the stamps that I'm sending you. The red stamp is the first one ever issued in Indonesia, King William III of the Netherlands. Wilhelmina became queen in 1898, queen of the Netherlands Indies or Dutch East Indies, as we were called then. In 1938, a commemorative stamp reminded us that Wilhelmina had ruled our islands for 40 years. But four years later, an anchor and some Japanese characters appeared on her picture. We were ruled by the Japanese for three years. And then, Indonesia Merdeka, freedom for Indonesia. But a declaration of independence was not enough. Like you, we had to fight a revolutionary war, the war in which I was a battalion commander. Finally, with United Nations aid, freedom at last came to Indonesia. This is Sukarno, the leader of our revolution and our first president. Our national anthem, Indonesia Raya. We think of Sukarno the same as you think of George Washington. Our leaders value the ideas of liberty held by your great men, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln. We erect monuments dedicated to the same ideals expressed in your constitution, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of worship. We believe in any God we want. 90% of our people are Muslims who pray to Allah and follow the teachings of Muhammad. About 3% of our people are Christians, like these Bataks in Sumatra, converted by Christian missionaries many years ago. 
these people are honoring one of their local heroes. Many of our present day leaders come from Batak villages like this, just as your leaders came from log cabins and frontier towns. Besides Muslims and Christians, there are Buddhists, Hindus, and followers of other religious beliefs in Indonesia. Here in Bali, women bring offerings of rice cakes, fruits, and flowers to their Hindu temple. Festivals have become much more frequent since we won our independence. The most remarkable change that freedom has brought to Indonesia is education. With the opening of schools everywhere, children flock to them, eager to learn. There are college students, elementary school students, and kindergarten children. Our little boys and girls sing and dance about the importance of rest and sleep just as little children do in your country. Sometimes they dress up. These two are the king and queen of Siam. And here are visitors from Japan. Boys in Indonesia play wild men of Borneo just like you play cowboys there. And we like our disguises too. But not all our play acting is done by young children. Puppet shows are one of our favorite entertainments in Java and Bali. The puppets cast a shadow on a thin screen and may be viewed from either side. The show begins about 8 in the evening and we watch all night long. Even the children stay up to watch. The puppet stories always involve a struggle between good and evil, and good always triumphs. But don't think that Indonesia uses only puppets to tell its stories. We have many dances on the many islands, some that tell stories, some that we do to express our feelings. These boys in central Sumatra are doing a plate dance, striking the plates with metal rings on their fingers. All through the islands, our children learn the music and the arts that make our country rich. Not rich in the sense of money, but rich in the pleasure of living. This girl on Bali, only seven years old, is dancing the Ligong, the dove dance. The instruments are made from bamboo by people in the village and belong to the village. Small boys may play in the orchestra and even the very old men. For hundreds of years, our children have learned the customs of our people, the old ways. Now that independence has come to us, we are also beginning to teach them the new. These children are growing into a world that is different from that which our old men have known. We plan to keep what was good in the old and find what is good in the new. For now, goodbye. I send you best wishes from your friends in Indonesia.